In this curve tutorial I'm gonna show you how to design for Instagram considering multi-page layout. Creating effective carousels requires capturing your audience attention and communicating your message clearly to enhance your brand recognition. So, first I'll show you some examples of carousels you can create for Instagram. For example, you can use carousels to tell a story using timeline or you can introduce your team or product by dividing a panoramic photo into several slides showcase your product or work such as portfolio, product catalog or collections or you can educate your audience about a topic or you can make a step-by-step -step tutorial. For today's tutorial we'll create a post carousel to showcase the new spring-summer 2024 collection for a fictional sunglasses eyewear brand called Helium and to do that we will be using Curve program to design our carousel. Before creating the working document, I need the brand assets and the photo shoot of the new collection. I have everything prepared in a separate document I have prepared previously. So, first of all, I'm going to open the document, copy the artboard with all the content I'm gonna use for the carousel. Next, I'll create a new document using a template from the social media section. I'll select the Instagram post option. So now, once I got my document created, the first thing I'm gonna do is to paste the artboard I copied previously and move it on top of the artboard so I have all the brand assets going in parallel with my carousel. Let's change the name of the artboard to number one. Now we'll create the remaining carousel slides. To do this, we can use the transform tool and enable the multi-selection options. With this option, you can drag the artboard to the right and the artboard name will update automatically and you will get a copy with the number 2. Then repeat it the times you need it, in my case I'm gonna repeat it 6 times. When working on carousels, I prefer initially design all the slides as a single image. I position all the artboards all together. To ensure that they're perfectly aligned, I turn on Smart Guides option and they will make sure that all the artboards are aligned. Let's start with the cover slide. I have selected this picture for the cover, but I would like to change the background and put a brown dark green color. So to do that, first I want to copy the image as I will need it later. Once the image is copied, remove the background by clicking background removal button. You can locate right in the quick menu down below. Now let's change the fill color of our artboard to dark green. Next, paste the previously copied image and proceed to mask only the bottom part. Use the pen tool to draw an outline around the desired areas to be masked. Then select both the outline and the image and click the mask button in the quick menu down below. So now I want to make that the cover picture could end up in the next slide so it gets linked to the content of the following slide. The first step in this case would be to group the eyeglasses and this green fabric we have below. And now we need to position them on the canvas, scale it up so it goes to the next slide. But actually, when you scale it out the group, you can see that the picture is only visible on the first slide. So, to make it visible on the next artboard, we have to do the following trick. Change the fill color of the second slide to the same dark green color. Copy the group. Then I grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle, no fill, no stroke color, around the area that covers the area where the picture should appear on the next slide. And uh, now your goal is to move the rectangle to the first artboard. Also, you can see that my rectangle is already on the first artboard because it was the selected artboard when I created that rectangle. Now your goal is to select both objects, the rectangle you just created and the group with the picture. Once selected, go to the quick menu at the bottom and create the mask. You will see how the rest of the picture disappears and goes to the rectangle. 
and now with that rectangle you can move it to the second slide and match the position. I also like zooming in a lot into the artboard to make sure that everything fits properly. Before moving to the next slide, I would like to place the logo and the title text over the cover. So let's go to our brand assets artboard and grab the elements like title text, logo and copy to the cover slide. I see actually that the text is not readable enough over the image because it's, there is a lack of contrast. So I'm going to adjust the position of the photo and move it a little bit up and that's all. I actually see that I got two copies of the main picture by some reason. So I'm just gonna remove one copy. And now we are done. And also remember to adjust the position of the second picture that sits in our board too. So it's still matching perfectly. As for the slide 2, I propose including a photo of a model showcasing sunglasses from the collection. To make a fluid experience all over the carousel and encourage viewers to navigate through the carousel and slides, I will apply the technique of the flowing picture I showed you before to all the slides. For example, in this slide, I'm gonna place the picture of the model showcasing the glasses and I'm gonna make sure that the picture actually ends on the third slide. I also see that the collage techniques works very well for this brand identity, so we will continue using collage technique all over the course. As for the slide 2, I will remove the background of the photo with the model and I will place it over the slide 2 and I thought that maybe I can use the branded pattern with the red lines as the background. That's actually why I like having all the brand assets near me so I can grab any of them and start playing with them and it's just like a puzzle pieces. You play with them around, you explore collage techniques, you see what elements combine well and what can be done. Actually, I think that this red pattern combines pretty well and gives a lot of dynamism and visual aspect to the carousel. Good visual composition always needs to have a good contrast, especially when designing carousels. Good contrast maintains visual variety, preventing the viewer from getting bored. Now, how do I place the pattern on the background? Good question. So I just can simply put it as it is, just a square, but I want to create a visually appealing transition. To achieve this, I will use mask and geometric shapes I have in my brand assets right there. So you can use them for any graphic material and you can achieve a very consistent results all across different platforms, supports and contexts. Once I place the shape on the artboard, I need to adjust the shape so it covers all the arm. To do that, I use the node tool and you can see the nodes appear all around the shape and just select the nodes you need to move and just move them. As for now, I'm gonna repeat the same process I did before to place the rest of the picture of the model on the slide number 3. I'm gonna duplicate it, I'm gonna make a mask, in this case I'm just gonna crop it and place the picture on the third slide and zoom in a lot, I love zooming in, to make sure it actually matches perfectly. As for the artboards 5 and 6, I have considered using the, this panoramic photo I have over here on the brand assets. And I would like to showcase several models of the glasses, positioning each one on each slide. In terms of designing technique, I will position the photo on one artboard for example and then I will repeat the same technique I showed you before. Copy the photo, paste it around, well actually it will be pasted on the same place and you can crop the photo and make sure it fits and that will automatically appear on the artboard you need.
to achieve a more cohesive transition between the slides 3 and 4, I plan to use a different geometric shape from the brand assets. In this case, I'm gonna pick up this circle and I'll copy the shape, make adjustments to the size and position it on the artboard. Now we can just select the pattern, select the shape, select all together and mask it. And don't forget to move the nodes to the end of the artboard so the pattern appears all around the artboard. As for the slide free, I have a no space to display multiple models of the glasses. I will copy the photos from brand assets and move them to artboard number 3. To ensure the consistency, I will use the background removal tool and remove the background from all three pictures. By the way, isn't it amazing how cool is that tool? Just remove the background perfectly, very accurate in just a few seconds. It's amazing. Let's go ahead. So once we have our pictures of our glasses, we just can move them around. But I actually would make sure that they are all the same size. And once you check that point, you can just place them where you want. In my case, I would like to have them in vertical position, in vertical column. So once I have positioned all of them, I will select all three glasses and go to the style menu and press the button distribute vertically auto distribute and we'll have the same distance between each other. By the way, at this point it's not really necessary to center all the elements. Uh, I think this issue is more important to address later when you work slide by slide. Now we're still working on the whole composition as one piece. Now we only have one last slide left and we will also use a branded pattern and link it to previous slide using one of the geometric shapes we have in our brand assets. I'll place the background with the pattern and then I will place the photos of a model showcasing the sunglasses and I also will use the background removal tool so it looks pretty dynamic and of course I will make her to go a little bit to the previous slide so it's visible a little and encourage people to slide. I noticed that there is a part of her clothes that's just cropped by photo, by camera, and we have no way to put it over here. So it's very easy to fix, don't worry. You just need the pen tool and you need to draw the estimate contour you would like for the, for the clothing. And then again, select the curve, select the object to mask and press the button mask in the quick menu down below. As for the last element for our last slide, I would like to place a call to action. In this case, just communicating to the audience when the collection is available. So, the carousel is about to be ready. Now it's time to separate the artboards and work them individually. During this stage, we can add branch elements to each slide, just copying and pasting them. It will be auto placed in the same place on each artboard. And also, we can ensure that all the elements are centered properly. For example, the glasses we, can, we are showcasing. Also, make sure that everything looks nice and each slide works a separate piece. And additionally, we will include some text with product information, for example, in this case. And also, we have an option to add navigation elements such as arrows or slide count, etc. In this case, I decided to omit them because of the flowing images from one slide to another already shows as a basic, very basic navigation items. However, I also consider it that the visual composition is pretty charged and some arrows just would be distracting people from our glasses collection. It's always up to you to decide what's better for your design and what navigation elements should you use and how to communicate to your audience. So the carousel is ready! It just does not need to be exported and you can go straight to the export menu and export artboard by artboard right from the export menu. And your course will be ready to be uploaded to Instagram.
and hope you have checked the font sizes as suitable for Instagram. Don't forget that tiny font size equals to miscommunication with your audience. And good luck designing carousels!